Greetings and peace, dear friends, from uh, Jerusalem, the city of peace, and the uh, special greetings to uh, Bishop Marian and Dean Randy and the cathedral community, uh, especially our friends at the National uh, Cathedral in Washington. It is really a blessing uh, to be together, uh, albeit virtually, but especially as we are connected as the body of Christ. We bring you greetings from our people here in the Diocese of Jerusalem, from our clergy and the, the faithful throughout the diocese. And, and we thank you for your continued prayer, for continued support that you have given to the Diocese of Jerusalem and to me personally. Uh, it is really kind of uh, what is, um, I would say, sad that I couldn't be with you in person to deliver this message. But I take this opportunity and we thank God for technology and that allows us to connect, even though, as I said, uh, as we are apart across the deep blue sea, um, to connect and to give you this message. And I hope that this message will, will bring some hope to you and, and also that can connect us even deeper together so that we continue to grow as uh, the body of Christ and as partners in the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who brings us together as, as siblings, as sisters and brothers. Uh, today, you know, as, as we all know that the Holy Land lives and goes through a very difficult time uh, of war and fighting and violence. Uh, we know that you know, many lives have been uh, uh, wasted, uh, unfortunately, many civilians affected. And as the rages of war continue in our region, you know, our hearts continues to uh, you know, bleed in a sense. You know, we continue to cry the loss of so many lives. So we urge you at this time to, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for the peace within the homeland of Jesus, where he walked and where he lived and preached and taught and healed. And of course, you know, it is a constant reminder to all of us that this land also witnessed the wonderful salvific work, work of Jesus Christ on the Holy Cross and his resurrection that gave us not only the motivation uh, but it gave us the living hope uh, that in Christ we shall overcome. And uh, we hope that for this land that uh, peace will prevail. We hope that you know reconciliation will be established among the different peoples. And we know, like you know, in the time of war, there's so much sense of enmity, there's so much sense of hatred uh, as people are suffering across the divide. It is a chance for all of us, you know, as Christians around the world to be united. You know, we have done this in the past and we will continue to do that. You know, we are united in prayer. We are united in thanksgiving to our Lord Jesus Christ who continues to inspire and empower us to do his work in this world. You know, I hope that, you know, my message at this time will be not only a comfort and encouragement to you, but also that I and my people and all those under my care will be also encouraged as we are connected together. Because the Bible teaches us that if one member of the body of Christ hurts or suffers, you know, we all suffer with it. And at this time, you know, our, you know, around the world, we know that there is so much suffering, whether it is in Ghana at this time of the floods, or whether it is in Africa, or whether it is in uh, the Ukrainian-Russian war, or in many, many other places, including our beloved Holy Land. There's so much of suffering in, around the world, but we will continue to pray and to work for peace and justice and reconciliation among the different peoples of our world. Our planet uh, is a wonderful place for all of us to live, and there's so much to share. There's so much to care for, including the climate, inclu including our own uh, Mother Earth, the planet that we are all enjoying. So therefore, you know, I think, you know, as human beings, we continue to concentrate on the uh, ministry that is entrusted to us to care for God's creation and above all to care for its humanity. Uh, and as human beings, we are the crown of creation, as, as we all we all know. You know, I would like also to, um, to share with you some uh, of the devastating uh, events that have taken place, but I'm sure that you have all have heard about uh, our beloved hospital in Gaza that was bombed a um, um, few days ago. 
um, this was a tragic uh, event. You know, the massacre that took place there um, just continues to remind us about the human suffering in our world today. Maybe the reason for this is the war between Israel and Gaza, uh, but we are quite certain that, you know, the human shortcoming, our failing to achieve, you know, the full humanity, becoming fully humans, you know, we are on this path, on this pilgrimage, and I hope people will realize whether they are leaders of the world, whether those in authority, that they will continue to seek peace and, in, in, and pursue it. But also at this time as well, you know, we are really kind of urging people to remember what it means to live according to our baptismal covenant, you know, to seek the dignity of every human person. That is our calling as Christians. Now, of course, you know, we live in an, a multi, um, a multi faith world where people who have different traditions and affiliations, you know, but I think we as Christians, our witness continues to be a very important voice in the midst of the wilderness of this world today. You know, we join hands with people of goodwill everywhere, people of faith, so that we, especially here in the Holy Land, as people of the children of Abraham people of different faiths, you know, whether Jews, Muslims, or Christians, continue to see, you know, the common ground that we had, you know, to continue to look at our common history. For over 14 centuries together, the three of us have lived side by side. It is time that we remember that suffering can only divide, suffering can only bring more uh, agony, can uh, leave us in places where we are divided and segregated and alienated from one another. But it is, I think, time that the whole world continues to pray for peace in the land of peace, a peace in the land where peace is missing. And that's exactly the message that I would like to bring to you today. And I would like to also to thank all of you who have been stood in solidarity uh, with me personally and also with the Diocese of Jerusalem during the difficult times that we are going through. And let me tell you that it has been uh, one of the difficult times that uh, I personally have experienced. And I continue to thank God for the many, many multitude of prayers. Uh, and uh, for those who have given so much support to me uh, personally and have prayed for encouragement and support during this time. So thank you very much to you and to everyone around the world, around the Anglican communion and around uh, the globe for your continued prayers and support. You know, the Diocese of Jerusalem, of course, continues to be along with many other churches around the world, uh, and especially here in this Holy Land, you know, continues to be a beacon of hope in the midst of suffering, in the midst of confusion, uh, especially at this time. Our hospitals and our clinics, our rehabilitation centers, our schools, and so many other institutions that care for the needy and the disadvantaged, they continue to be a source of hope and a beacon of light and life in the midst of suffering and agony. You know, today, the Diocese of Jerusalem, together with its congregations, our clergy, who are working very, very, very hard in order to care for their people, and those who are in their also parishes, not only Anglicans or Episcopalians, but everybody in their, in their surroundings, they continue to serve and to heal and to offer advice and to encourage people uh, so that we may come uh, and go through all of this and they uh, come out uh, stronger uh, and more blessed. It's difficult to see that right now, but I know that God calls us and, um, and God allows uh, such things to happen in our lives so that we may take these not only as challenges and problems, but also as opportunities for growth, opportunities for learning, and opportunities where we become uh, better humans and better Christians. You know, the, the, uh, the diocese at this time also continues to struggle, I have to say, because of uh, the absence of our pilgrims, and the international community that cannot come and be physically with us. Uh, and this brings also even further, I would say, sadness that, you know, the holy sites and our churches and communities 
uh, are missing, you know, uh, pilgrims and friends who continue to come and visit and to be with us and stand in solidarity and to worship with us on daily on daily basis. So that's, you know, having, having said that, you know, I want uh, you to remember that, you know, uh, once this is over, uh, you know, the Holy Land continues to, uh, uh, to miss all of you, to continues to uh, call its faithful to come and see, uh, to come and walk in the footsteps of Jesus uh, and to walk together as a community, as a community of faith, as a community of Christians, as the body of Christ. And I hope that, you know, once, you know, uh, pilgrimages and people can start coming back to, to Jerusalem, it will be an opportunity again for, uh, um, you know, building further relationships and also connecting with our congregations or dioceses uh, around the Anglican Communion and, and even beyond. It is important that, you know, the Diocese of Jerusalem as well continues to be a church. Uh, and we have learned over history that the church has a very important voice in the midst of suffering and war, especially. Um, we all know it's not easy uh, to speak the language of love, the language of reconciliation and peace building. But, you know, we are called to be the church more than ever. That is our calling. And that's why the Ministry of Peace and Reconciliation continues to be at the heart of the Diocese of Jerusalem, at the heart of our Christian calling, you know, to be disciples of Christ, to be people who live in community and respect the dignity of every human person. And that's why we are calling upon everybody, not only here in the Holy Land, but around the world, you know, to gather together for the end of war, the end of suffering, not only in the Middle East or specifically in the Holy Land, but around the world. That's, that's our calling as Christians. So therefore, at this time, I call you for prayer, and please continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, like how can we forget Jerusalem? The psalmist tell us. Yeah, no one can forget their own right hand. And therefore we cannot forget Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and all those who dwell in it. People of every faith, people of every background. Because that tapestry of prayer uh, and the mosaic, the mosaic nature of Jerusalem continues to be one of the best messages that we send out to the world. Therefore, working for peace and building uh, bridges uh, continues to be the only solution for people in this region. And I hope that more than ever, you know, that this time would be a chance for a, a peace process that will take us to the next phase of our lives here in the Holy Land, where peace can be not only based on justice, but it can be maintained for a long time sustainable and lasting peace in the place of peace. And finally, I would like also to request your support, uh, your presence, and you know, to feel and to uh, suffer even spiritually you know, with us at this time as we uh, try to find the way out of this crisis that we go through at this time. The needs in the Diocese of Jerusalem are gonna be incredible and significant especially as we look not only on restoring the infrastructure in the hospital in Gaza, but also all the other affected institutions that are going also through very serious difficulties because uh, of the closure, because of the uh, nature that we have reached to a point where everything is shut down. Um, and we hope that you know, this will not take long until we go back to some normalcy and our institutions continue will continue to function as you, as usual and they continue to be sanctuaries and also places of refuge to many people around in our communities again thank you very much dean randy thank you very much bishop marian for your wonderful hospitality for extending the invitation to preach at your cathedral on sunday uh, i hope that i can uh, uh, you know, like answer to this uh, wonderful invitation, this great, grace, very gracious uh, uh, hospitality that you have given to, to me personally. Uh, and I can do that in the near future. But for now, again, thank you very much. Uh, continue to pray for us as much as we pray for you, your Diocese of Washington, and also for National Cathedral and the community and the family of this wonderful place of yours. May God bless you all. and. 
best wishes from me and from my diocese and my clergy at this time. God bless you all.